We have purchased a red brick home on the central coast of New South Wales, a true ugly duckling. And whilst most people have told me it should be knocked down, I have a vision to transform this home into a Palm Springs inspired masterpiece. I've worked with thousands of clients on their own renovate or rebuild journey, but this time it's our home and it's personal. We purchased this property in New Minor on the central coast of New South Wales as an investment property. It's tired and dated. It looks like it was built in the 70s, which is when a rear extension was added and the house was actually bricked up. But the original house dates back to the 1950s. We knew that this was going to be an investment property for us, but as our tenants moved on and we were looking to spruce up the property, we decided to do something for us to live in. It's one hour north from Sydney where we work and live. So this is a chance for us to live part of the time in Sydney and part of the time up here. The place has a lot of potential, but the house needs a lot of tender love and care to make it beautiful once again. The kitchen and bathroom were a disaster. There was no storage at all and no connection between inside and out, except for a rattly sliding door and a really odd shaped rear veranda. We have to make the floor plan work. At the moment, we know it doesn't. Two glass doors here. I'd love to open them up. Mind you, green and timber tones are sort of almost back in again, but not these green and timber tones. The bathroom is like ugly. It's yeah, in a bad I, position. The light is horrible. All we're doing is moving it right next door. I think the other room could become the kitchen. Money-wise, time-wise. New kitchen, new kitchen here, new kitchen there. Same price, same cost. To unlock this property's potential, we had to seriously rethink the floor plan and of course give the facade a total makeover. But I had an idea, a way to turn this house into something pretty special. I could see it in my mind, but I had to convince Sandro. We'd visited Palm Springs, the iconic city located out in the desert of California only a few years ago. For me, it was a dream come true. I've always loved mid-century modern architecture. It's not only beautiful, but I think it perfectly suits our Australian way of life. Vertical lines in cladding, natural stone walls, grids of stack bond masonry, and of course, the beautiful patterns created by using breeze blocks. Inspired by the modernist appeal of our Palm Springs experience, and perhaps those three palm trees on site, I immediately saw the potential of our 1970s red brick facade and without much hesitation I began explaining my vision to Sandro. He was sceptical at first, in fact everybody was, but he also enjoyed the Palm Springs experience and he has faith in what I do. So our renovation journey began. The original home was typical of its 1970s era, a three bedroom single storey house with an L shaped lounge dining and kitchen. At some stage, an addition was added, creating a new room at the back of the home. The only bathroom, laundry, and separate toilet were all accessed by walking through the kitchen, which was not great. Sandra wanted a renovation that wouldn't take long, and of course, that wouldn't cost a lot of money. I looked for solutions that would improve the floor plan without expanding on the existing footprint. By doing this, we could avoid lengthy council approvals, instead working with a certifier, as it of course must comply with council guidelines. After exploring multiple floor plan possibilities, I decided to turn the smallest bedroom into a new and improved bathroom. That rear extension, which flows off the living room, became the perfect location for our new kitchen. I therefore needed to reposition that third bedroom and that awkward laundry and separate toilet could then become a master bedroom's ensuite. That old bathroom would now become a hallway to provide access to the new master suite and the slide clothes drying area. A problem was that this utility space was going to be visible from the living and dining room. Who wants to look at a laundry? Nobody. So if I can't hide it, I decided to flaunt it. To the right hand side that's closest to the living area, I've included a small bar perfectly in keeping with that mid-century modern Palm Springs focus of entertaining at home. 
When working on a renovation project, one of the challenges is to unify the old with the new. I decided to do this by repeating and continuing the use of the same finishes throughout the project as much as possible. That would help create continuity from room to room and it began with the flooring. The engineered oak timber floors that I selected from Flooring Extra adds that organic warmth to the mostly white internal palette. Our beautiful new floor extends throughout the new floor plan into the three bedrooms and also into our new kitchen. The original kitchen was a true example of 1970s style. It had a bright green formica top above glossy timber laminated doors. Charming, but horrible. When do we start designing the kitchen? Can't well, wait. I've already started. Um, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I've got an idea of the look of the placement, so we'll go through to make sure that works on site. All white? It won't be all white. Thank you. Yeah. Will it be green as it was before? Yeah. Oh, I got to there. It, it won't be the green that it was before. <laughs> Thank God. Yes, I knew quite early on that I wanted to have a green kitchen. The thing that stands out to me most in this renovation, I think, is the kitchen. I think it's really beautiful. I don't think this was an easy renovation. I think with such a big job like this, with so many things to consider, I think um, that made it quite hard. I remember from our visit to Palm Springs, all of the houses had that same mid-century modern style. They all were horizontal in shape. They all had uh, nice front gardens. They were all white. They were really classy, and uh, I think it's really great how James and Sandra have managed to uh, sort of replicate that style and bring it to bring it to Yamana. The room that I'm sleeping in is the one with the bunks in it. Uh, I really like that room because uh, I love waking up to the light pouring in. What I'm looking forward to the most, it's got to be that pizza oven. I'm looking forward to chowing down on some of those pizzas that we make with that oven. I'm so excited. When I first saw the house, it was definitely a shock. I was just sort of thinking to myself, oh, I don't know why they bought this house. I don't know what they were thinking, but look how it turned out. It's amazing. When we went to Palm Springs with our dads, it was just such an amazing experience, you know, to see how much inspiration my dads gained from the architecture and the plants and the colours around them. I mean, everyone wants to go to Palm Springs, so it was crazy, but it was also just so, so cool to see, you know, your parents just flourish with inspiration. I think my favourite part of the new home is definitely the foyer. It was a great idea and it's sort of just a miscellaneous room, but it really adds to the whole spacious, a spacious home. I think the thing that I'm looking forward to most is being able to have a house where we can, you know, have guests over and entertain and have dinner parties. And it's something that they've wanted to have for a very long time. So it's very exciting. This home is actually quite humble. It only has three bedrooms, which works perfectly for how we live. But I knew that I needed to elevate it to give it the wow factor. And the way that I was going to do that was through the finishes and fittings. Following my mid-century modern inspiration, I knew that I wanted the interior of the home to be quite white as you flowed throughout the whole home. But I also knew that I wanted to play with texture and I was going to add it somewhere. I selected a mix of interior cladding from EasyCraft to add interesting yet calm textures to the walls. This also provided me with the perfect location to inject some colour to contrast the otherwise white on white interior. Green was already in my mind, so to begin my interior selection process, I started from the greens available for kitchen joinery. We've chosen Forage, a calm and very elegant muted green. It's from the Polytech range and then I match this green tone for the painted feature wall in the living room. The combination of vertical lines and the warm earthy green creates visual interest throughout the room. It's very welcoming. The new kitchen has become an extension of the living room and is visible from the very moment you enter the space. It had to look the part and be easy to keep clean and tidy. I selected the vignette finish that doesn't show any finger marks. It's actually a wonderful surface. But there's more to designing the perfect kitchen than just selecting the right colour. Part of my design included a kitchen island that sits visibly in the middle of the room. So it had to become a beautiful feature within itself. 
I added a vertical line feature and a curve to one corner to add interest. And the metallic kickboard merges the colour with the timber flooring, making the island appear lighter, almost like it's floating. As we enter the living room now, the kitchen sits comfortably in the background, but doesn't go unnoticed. The Caesar stone bench top provides lots of character and a natural stone look. The vein includes a subtle mix of deep greens that complement the colour of the kitchen joinery and the subtle hits of gold support my choice of brush brass for the door handles and tapware. The organic vein runs right through the stone, it's not just on the surface, so I didn't have to worry about spending the money or time on mitering the edges. It allowed me to remain with a 20mm stone bench top, which is a very cost effective choice. It's also perfectly on trend and in the style that I was after. I always consider the tapware and the joinery handles on a kitchen to be like the jewellery of an outfit, so it's common for me to keep those finishes consistent. These brush brass lip handles from Momo are practical but very slim and elegant, in true mid-century modern style. They're barely visible and yet they make a bold statement. The Parisi kitchen mixer is centred to the new splashback window and because it's very visible from the living and dining area, it had to look beautiful. I selected a tall gooseneck mixer. It's sculptural and practical. It's so beautiful, I could almost wear it. This sink is a beautiful object in itself. Square, deep and in the same brush brass finish as the tap. It's definitely an amazing item. The edge of the sink is so thin that it doesn't stand out, resulting in a really refined look. And if any of your family members are known for dropping things, I think this is a great practical way to protect the edges of your stone. To contrast the clean straight lines of the joinery, the door handles and the sink, I looked to the splashback to add some additional texture. I placed the small format tiles in a vertical stack bond, creating a grid-like pattern, which is perfectly in tune with that Palm Springs inspired look I'm going for. Their undulated edge adds an almost organic feel. Their gloss finish contrasts beautifully against the other matte surfaces. Our kitchen is very exposed and visible from every angle of the living and dining area, so the appliances had to look beautiful and not stand out too much. As I knew that I was going to select brush brass for the tapware and the accessories, I decided not to have stainless steel appliances because I didn't want those metallic finishes to compete against each other. And if I'd have gone for brush brass appliances, well, Sandro would have killed me. The solution was to go with black. Matte black is also a reoccurring theme within our color palette. You can see it in the new window frames, the light fittings, as well as our Clipsal power points and light switches. To select all of my appliances, I went to Signature Appliances. It not only provided me with a one-stop shop, but it allowed me to see all of the different finishes of each separate appliance all in one beautiful location. I had to select a narrow fridge because our kitchen is not particularly large. I also wanted to include a French door fridge, so I managed to find the narrowest one available. Two smaller doors is actually practical because when you open it, it doesn't impinge on the work traffic area. If I had one large fridge with one big door, it definitely would. The fridge is positioned at one end of the kitchen, slightly hidden by a nib wall but it's black stainless steel finish is elegant and well worth looking at. For the cooktop, well, we went with induction, not only because gas is a non-renewable resource, but also because we have installed solar panels. So having an electric cooktop, it just financially made sense. It's also black, so of course it matches perfectly with the other black elements in the room. It's sleek in appearance, easy to use and very, very easy to keep clean. Sandro is a big fan of easy to keep clean. And talking about fans, well, I selected an undermount range hood. This means that we've got the suction above the cooktop, but the range hood doesn't stand out. Instead, it blends in with the beautiful line of those overhead cabinets. The microwave is also black. Located in the kitchen island, it's easily accessible but hidden from view. The two ovens are also black as well. Now, I could have selected one 900mm wide oven to match the size of the cooktop above, but I preferred two smaller ones. 
I often advise my clients to include two ovens. I think it's super practical. It means that you're only heating up a smaller area for a family meal. But when it comes time to entertain, you've got the benefits of having two ovens and cooking things at two different times or two different heats. So for us, this was the perfect decision. The dishwasher is positioned to the right hand side of the sink. Now it's completely in view from the living and dining room. So I decided to go with a fully integrated model. That means the front panel of it is the same color and finish as the rest of the kitchen, allowing it to blend in. But when we need it, it's in the perfect position. When designing the layout with Apollo Kitchens, I placed the pantry to the far right hand side and included an appliance cupboard in the same location. We've got the pantry on the far right, the fridge on the far left, and in between them we have one continuous run of bench space. It's practical because we've got a workspace, a preparation space. I've got the sink with bench space on either side, and I've got the cooktop with plenty of bench space on either side as well. The original window in that room was quite large and we got a lot of natural light and also the beautiful coastal breeze. Making it a smaller window was a big decision, but that opened up the opportunity to have joinery beneath and above. It was a practical decision. We still got the natural light and an openable window by including a new splashback window. And that beautiful horizontal line actually makes the kitchen feel much wider than it is. I also wasn't worried about losing any amazing view from that window because that's where our brand new granny flat's gonna be located. I repeated the exact same finishes in the new laundry, linen and bar because that area and the kitchen are both visible from the living and dining so it just made sense. The same easy to clean finish in muted green, the same character bench top and the same tiles with their irregular surface plus those linear brass handles. The mixer here is the same as the one that I use in the kitchen, a tall gooseneck with a very practical pull out spray. The laundry tub is a single bowl, but it's deep, square, and also in brushed brass. It's a piece of art. How good looking is our laundry area? The washing machine is in line with the cabinetry. Now I had to find a very clever solution to deal with this issue, do you remember that? It's black, of course, like the rest of our appliances, and to me, it's very good looking. Every detail here had to be well considered because the laundry is on view. The original ugly bathroom has now turned into a beautiful hallway with a utility space and a bar. I repeated that same vertical rib detail that I'd used on the kitchen island on the base and the overhead cupboard to the bar. Because you can see both of those spaces from the living room, it creates a beautiful flow from one space to the next. But there is one different finish here, a black frame glass door above the cabinet for the bar area. It provides some storage and it also mirrors the bar fridge that's sitting underneath it. It creates a small area with a personality of its own, a place to stop by when we're entertaining. As you walk past, please help yourself to a Palm Springs martini. The old kitchen area was quite easy to transform into our new master bedroom. We built a new wall to separate it from the dining area and it's not that massive, but it's large enough to include a queen bed and bedside tables. For the wardrobe, I selected sliding doors as they don't open into the room or intrude where the furniture is. The tall sliding mirror doors make the room feel twice their size. They bounce all of that natural light around and they also provide lots of access to all of that storage. The black frame, well, that repeats the finish on the window. So there again, it's all about continuity. The matte black wall sconces add a refined hotel feel, but they also allow room on the bedside tables for books and decor items. But it's the wainscoting on the wall behind the bed that really allows me to add some character. Because it's a small room, I decided not to go with one full wall of cladding. By having wainscoting, which only sits about 1200 high, it lets me turn up the volume on the depth of color without it dominating the space or making that room feel smaller than it is. The original laundry area and separate toilet became the perfect space to create an ensuite without pulling down any walls. The old separate WC is now a shower. 
It's so deep that at the end of this space, I could add a generous ledge for shampoos, shower gels, and of course a plant. It's useful and beautiful. I chose Terrazzo tiles from Central Coast Tile and Stone for the floors. I wanted a busy pattern with lots of character, but to allow them to be the hero of the room, I teamed them with a calmer white tile for the walls. Elongated subway tiles placed in a vertical stack bond once again provide that textural grid pattern which is so characteristic of the Palm Springs style. They're interesting but subtle. For the tapware, I wanted to repeat that subtle bling, so I selected Parisi tapware and accessories as they have the nicest brush brass on the market. The design is so streamlined and fits perfectly with my mid-century modern theme. I combined a ceiling shower for that pampering resort feel with a shower on rail as it's practical when one doesn't want to wet their hair and it's also perfect when it comes time to clean the shower. The towel rail, toilet roll holder and wall hooks are all in the same brush brass finish as they're so beautiful, they're like pieces of jewellery. The deep walnut vanity in solid timber adds some natural warmth to the room and its rib profile repeats the linear texture that's familiar within this house. The pill-shaped basins add some soft curves to soften all of those hard surfaces. The shower frame is matte black to match the strong lines of the window frames, but for the wall sconces, I wanted them in brushed brass to make a statement and add the bling that every bathroom deserves. I repeated the same finishes in both the new ensuite and the new bathroom. The ensuite, well, it's a complete success, combining two odd shaped rooms into one brand new value adding ensuite. In the bathroom, well, it was a tiny bedroom that wasn't practical as a bedroom, but it's a perfect size for a family bathroom. I wanted to include a bathtub as well as a shower in the new bathroom. A freestanding bathtub is visually smaller than an inset or built-in one, as it makes the floor area seem larger. That's because the more floor that we can see, the more space there appears to be. Selecting a wall mount vanity is also a practical decision, as you can see the floor underneath and it makes the room appear larger. It's also easy to clean under there as well. There's actually a great amount of storage in these vanities, but the more storage the better. So I decided to include in-wall shaving cabinets to both bathrooms, as this provides some continuity. It also gave me a clever place to hide the PowerPoint. On either side of these, I included brush brass wall sconces, but a new feature in our home that is unique to this bathroom is that brand new courtyard. It was a feature in direct reference to the mid-century modern taste of Palm Springs homes. It added time to our renovation and extra cost, of course, but the stack bond grid in the brickworks masonry blocks and that breeze block detail on the top was essential for me to emphasize that Palm Springs style that I wanted. The small window that was there has now become a large glass door. It allows us to get fresh air in as it tilts in from the base, but it also opens, allowing us to look after the plants in that area when we need to. Because now as you enter that room, you look past the bathroom through the glass and into that courtyard, it makes what was a tiny room feel much larger. It's a great value adding feature in this project. All of the old windows were rattly, damaged and dated. There was no doubt that to bring this house into the 21st century, they had to be replaced. This was an investment. It's something that costs us now, but we're going to save money continually into the future. It's quite amazing to realise that 30% of your heating and cooling is lost through ill-fitting or poor quality windows and doors. Our new UPVC double glazed windows from Integral Windows not only look beautiful, but they provide great thermal and sound insulation. I selected matte black for the frames, as I knew it would bring a strong defining character to our Palm Springs inspired home. It works in the same way that eyeliner does in makeup. It's a thin black line, but it definitely adds a lot of impact. The oak flooring continues into the two front bedrooms. These rooms didn't need major work. 
We added the floor to ceiling wardrobes to maximise storage and once again those large sliding doors don't interfere with the furniture options within the room. The mirror helps bounce light and it makes it feel much larger than it is. I wanted to include a bunk room as part of this renovation project. I think they're fun. I think they're also clever. They add a lot of sleeping options in what can be a small room. To add further character in this room, I included floor to ceiling V-groove cladding to two walls. This provides the perfect background for the white frame bunk beds. This room faces north and that very large window provides lots of natural light. So I knew that I could afford to go for a darker color for the feature walls. The larger front room has become our very impressive guest room. And although it's also got that north facing window and lots of natural light, I decided not to include a full wall of cladding, but to repeat the same detail from our master bedroom with that channel wainscoting detail behind the bed. The vertical lines in the channel profile add great texture, but the overall horizontal line created by the wainscoting feature adds to the sense of width. I reinforced this by using a deep, rich terracotta. The sheer curtains from Abbey Shutters and Blinds soften the space. They help shield the sun. Creating this room was actually a lot of fun. As the front garden is visible through the large window on one side and the mirror wardrobe expands the space on the other, this room feels spacious and welcoming. The only extension to our home's original footprint is our brand new entry foyer, and it has completely transformed how this home looks and feels. The main entry in the old floor plan was a narrow door to the side of the home that led straight into the living room. The addition of our new entry foyer has totally changed the way it feels when you enter the home. I wanted this space to have a lot of impact to be the first room to tell you my Palm Springs story the moment you walk in the door. A large window to connect the inside with the outside, vertical lines in the wall cladding and on point exposed rafters. The stone wall, well it's a strong reference to the Palm Springs homes that I love so much and that striking stack bond breeze block wall outside is visible through the front window. I couldn't have told my Palm Springs inspired story without combining these important elements. To create the perfect connection between outside and inside, I repeated the use of those terrazzo tiles on the outside steps and flowed those through into the floor of the brand new entry foyer. And the stone wall continues inside the entry foyer. Such a good touch if I say so myself. The combined living dining room looks expansive and bright with the amount of natural light being doubled since the day that our new Velux skylights were installed. What a difference that has made to this room. One of the major problems with the original home was the lack of connection between inside and outside. The original alfresco to the rear of the home wasn't connected to the kitchen. By relocating the kitchen to its new location, now there's a perfect flow between the kitchen and our fresco dining. It results in a natural connection. We added French doors instead of sliding doors. It allows them to become completely open, adding to that feeling of space and connection. We slightly expanded the floor area of the alfresco and tiled it for easy maintenance. For continuity, these are the same terrazzo floor tiles that I used on the front entry. We created an outdoor cooking area of the built-in barbecue and an item that Sandra would just had to have, our Gosney pizza oven, plus a very practical stainless steel sink, perfect for the outdoors. The bench top of our outdoor cooking area has a very subtle grey vein. It's been made and manufactured to be outdoors. It's durable and easy to clean. The WeatherTex cladding on the walls was a beautiful addition, but also a necessary one. It allows us to cover the changes that we've made to the brick walls by closing and adjusting door and window openings. The result is stunning. These vertical lines are perfectly in tune with the Palm Springs style, adding texture and a sense of height to the space. A brand new pergola was added, which gives intimacy to the space without affecting the amount of natural light. Once again, its geometric pattern adds interest to the space, making this a very attractive addition to the home. 
Whilst the alfresco is a natural extension of the kitchen, the living and dining area now extend onto a brand new deck. We replaced the original wide windows with a stunning oversized sliding glass door and fixed panel. The space to the side of our home was devoid of any character and it was completely unutilised. Building the deck was actually a simple process and the inclusion of mod wood for the decking was the perfect choice. It's good looking and it's maintenance free. Not only has this created a cool destination to relax on really hot days, but it's also added a greater sense of space to the living room as one space now flows easily to the next. At the side of our home was a really unloved and ugly space. It was where the clothesline was located. This has undergone a major transformation. In fact, the change here is possibly the most dramatic throughout the whole renovation project. I wanted to retain the original Hills Hoist clothesline. It's an Australian icon and I was firm about it remaining. We added the masonry wall to create the internal garden for the new bathroom and one small raised garden bed, the perfect height to access our herbs as well as creating some casual seating. I repurposed the original sink from the old kitchen and had it installed here in some V-groove clad joinery. I used tiles left over from the bathrooms to create a splashback and added shelving using some old timber pieces from the renovation. It's now created a practical potting or outdoor utility space. Now with a punch of Umina Springs Yellow, that clothesline looks a million dollars. We also added a very practical external shower here, but it's that elegant grid of pavers and the dichondra in between that really brings a sense of order and elegance to the space. It's not only practical and neat, but it has the pattern I continuously refer to whilst creating the mid-century modern feel. This is now a space that we come to all the time. But the transformation that everybody in town is talking about is of course our facade. It is unrecognisable. The ugly duckling that we started with has finally blossomed into a beautiful white swan. It's now truly beautiful, but it took more than just painting it the right shade of white. I knew that a wider appearance for our facade was necessary. That's why adding a small extension to the left-hand side of the house not only created an entry foyer, but it also visually widened our home, adding that horizontal look, adding great street appeal. We also added a raised garden bed under the front windows. We pushed the gable end in to make the facade seem lighter and exposed rafters were added. These pieces of timber are non-structural, they're aesthetic, but they're important because they allow me to add that visual texture that I saw on so many Palm Springs facades. The landscaping has had a massive impact on the street presence of this home, elegant and structured in true mid-century modern style. It's the combination of masonry, breeze blocks and pavers from brickworks that allowed me to create my vision, the structure that I needed in our landscaping. They are truly beautiful. The pavers on the driveway repeat that familiar grid pattern, inviting you to the double front doors, whilst the contrast with the white gravel results in a white on white palette, bringing all of the different patterns and textures together. But it's the new entry foyer that steals the show. That stone feature wall is non-structural, but it was essential for me to achieve the character of a mid-century modern home, and its vertical height was necessary to contrast and complement the new horizontal proportions of the facade. Because it extends up through the roof, it looks like it has always been there. The combination of colours within these stones help activate all of the other elements on the facade. The original concrete roof tiles were tired, worn and damaged. There was no way that this home would look the way that it does now without a brand new roof. This house immediately gained a modern fresh appeal as soon as the new roof started going on. What a day that was. The standing seam profile from number one roofing is contemporary and classic at the same time. And the latest blue gum colour from Colourbond is just perfect for this project. I normally like to include one large front door, I think it's practical to walk in and out of, but double front doors was one feature that I saw in almost every Palm Springs home. So I knew that we had to have double front doors, but for their colour, 
I had a specific color in mind. I wanted a specific shade of yellow. I got to work with the scientific team at Taubman's and create my very own yellow, a brand new color. So the new color is called Eumina Springs. How's that for a set of welcoming front doors? The geometric pattern created by the breeze block wall provide balance to the space, but it also tells a modernist story without taking attention away from the other elements of this facade. All strong elements for different reasons, the breeze block wall, the double yellow doors and the feature stone wall combined to create the perfect mid-century modern look that I had in mind. The original fencing on our home was falling apart, so of course we have added some brand new metal fencing in the same colour bond colour as the roof. But to really bring this project into the 21st century, we have included a brand new solar system. We've added Longy solar panels and a Goodwee inverter and car charger. It's very satisfying knowing that we can create all of the energy that we need every day from our roof. It's wonderful. To find the details of all of the products and materials that I've used on this renovation project, it's easy. Just go to jamesborderhouse.com, you can download the fact sheets and also find some bonus videos. The final layer that I needed to tell my Palm Springs inspired story was the decor and furniture items. Outside, to soften all of the hard finishes, we added grass to moderate the bright palette and a balanced mix of cacti and easy to maintain structural plants. They help tell that Palm Springs story. But inside, I wanted to create my mid-century modern feel without it looking like it was a museum, like it was too manufactured or forced. What I wanted was a good balance of geometric shapes, natural materials and standout pieces. I'm lucky that my partner is a very talented artist and I knew that some of his artworks would fit very well throughout our Palm Springs inspired interiors. The colours he uses are an elegant balance of vibrant and calm tones and the figures that he paints are sculptural and strongly influenced by mid-century European art. Perfect. We also have a great collection of decor items that we've collected over the years from Australia and from our trips around the world. It was time to refer back to my brief and work out what we needed to take out of storage. The furniture pieces had to firstly be functional as this is a home we intend to use with our family and friends, but they also had to complement my interior palette in colour, shape and texture. I'm truly happy with every single piece that we've selected. In the entry foyer, where the first impressions are asserted, the bench is from M & Co. It has a strong mid-century modern feel. The impact of style and elegance is immediate. As we enter the living room, geometric shapes are immediately evident. A great balance of curves and straight lines. The low line sofa is elegant and streamlined. The coffee table wide and interesting. The TV unit is also low lined. It includes curves, rib details and black legs. The dining table is round, selected to soften the feeling of our interiors, but it's also practical here, as a rectangle table wouldn't fit within the space. At 1.5 metres wide, this is the perfect choice, maximising the amount of seating we can and allowing us to easily navigate around it and through the room. The sideboard was another perfect find. It's useful to display books and decor items and it also has closed storage. It continues the curved and rib theme that's in this room, like the kitchen island that's right nearby. The kitchen stools are tall, slim and have a curved back, which contrasts all of the other straight lines in the space. It also provides a homage to the arch in that wall that we had to remove, it just didn't work. The rattan finish has the warmth of organic materials, the appeal of a handmade product and the geometry in its pattern that's so characteristic in our interiors. The same mix of rattan and oak timber is repeated this time in our master bedroom. This elegant oak bed and bedsides are from Bedshed and it beautifully complements the green tones of our feature wall. We love this room. It's so welcoming and comfortable too. It's not big, but it's perfect for us. And although they're not visible, our amazing tempura mattresses in the guest and master bedroom are like sleeping on a cloud. 
and our kids tell us the ceiling mattresses in the bunk room are also a dream to sleep on. The guest bedroom has a statement queen timber bed and bedside tables. It incorporates the same elements with oak and rattan. This time we've also got marble tops. It's quite a sculptural piece with beautiful curves. All of these are from Life Interiors. Even though I wanted every bedroom to have a different identity, I've still selected furniture and items of decor that showed the same reoccurring elements. This creates a sense of familiarity as you walk from room to room. I wanted to grab the effect of that strong yellow on my front doors and bring it inside the house and I knew the way that I could do this. I asked Sandro to create a mid-century inspired painting using the same yellow from the front door. He did this quite easily with some of our Taubman's paint leftovers. He used the green from the living room as a base, used some of the white from the walls to draw the shapes and finally my very own new Minor Springs yellow. Two coats of that and the job was done. Honestly, he is so clever and that artwork has become an instant hit. It looks just right in its location. Now, as you walk through the new front doors and enter the home, you have that flow. Have I mentioned continuity yet? Another reoccurring element in the styling that you might have noticed is plants. There are plants in every room, adding a rich and luscious feel around the house. Finally, books on shelves, sculptures big and small, traveling mementos and art on the walls to add that finishing touch. All of these items tell a story that is uniquely ours, exactly as every home should be. Outside, all of the furniture pieces had to be comfortable, durable, and of course, resist the weather. At Cave Home, we found just what we needed. The dining table extends to seat more people when we entertain, and with its linear pattern and rounded corner, it brings a feel of mid-century taste to this space. Those chairs, I just had to have them. As I look at the striking timber pergola above, I'm reminded of all of the timber and building materials that have gone into this massive project. The team at Walker Brothers have gone above and beyond in looking after all of our needs. I wish to send out a massive thanks to all of the brands that have become part of this renovation. All of them I've personally selected, and most of them are ones that I have worked with for years. I also wish to thank our local trades, especially our builders Mark and my old mate Paul. And a big shout out to our neighbours who have watched it all come together and have been so patient with us. To me, the true success of this renovation project has been to save an ugly but solid home from being knocked down. We've celebrated the age of the original dwelling and we've explored its potential. We worked with the character of the home. We've added it where there was none. We looked at the original floor plan. We reimagined it. Our aim was to create a home that we'd be happy to spend time in, that is practical to use, and that is beautiful to welcome our family and friends. I trust that you've enjoyed our U Minor Springs renovation journey, and hopefully you've been inspired and learned something along the way about interior design and renovation. My name is James Treble, an interior designer with over 30 years experience within the building and design industry. I have worked with thousands of clients on their own renovate or rebuild journeys, but this time it was different. This time it was personal. And the results? Well, I couldn't be happier. <laughs>